Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this webinar brought to you by FX Street. This is High Probability Trading Strategies, Entries, and Exits. Uh, today is February 5th, 2015. My name is James Chen. I am the Chief Technical Strategist with City Index Group. Now, today what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be giving you uh, just a quick overview of uh, how I trade the markets on a daily basis. Uh, and then I'm going to be looking at uh, the different markets, uh, including uh, most of the major uh, Forex pairs, as well as a couple commodities and uh, maybe some indices thrown in there as well. So uh, we're going to be talking about all of that, looking at the charts and tell you what I'm looking at, uh, as well as giving you uh, just a brief overview of, uh, you know, how I approach the markets on a daily basis. Now, before we get to that, uh, just a quick note, uh, you know, uh, recently what has been happening, some key events. Uh, of course, I haven't been on uh, FX Street for uh, a couple months now. I've been uh, busy traveling and doing all that stuff. But uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the events, the recent major events that uh, we've been looking at, of course, uh, we had the Swiss franc uh, move after the, the cap on the Swiss franc was taken off uh, uh, unexpectedly by the uh, Swiss National Bank. Um, uh, the cap of uh, 120 against the euro. And, of course, we saw a big move on that. Um, you know, needless to say, that was a huge move if we take a look at this. Uh, now, we see some uh, recovery in the euro Swiss um, as we speak, but uh, this is basically a very unprecedented move. So that was a, that was a big uh, event that occurred in the last several weeks. So in terms of the uh, European... Um, the euro, we see the ECB uh, QE announcement or quantitative easing announcement that made the uh, the European equities rise as well as the uh, the euro, um, you know, pretty much plummet. And we'll be talking about that in a second and how that plays out on the uh, on the uh, currency pairs. Okay, and then uh, finally, uh, in terms of oil, you know, uh, if you're not an oil trader, uh, oil still does. Uh, affect uh, many of the different global markets. And we see most recently there has been a bounce in oil, although, uh, you know, it's uh, persistently been uh, very low and it dropped tremendously within the last couple months. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the oil chart, let's just actually take a look at the oil, oil chart real quick. If we take a look here, uh, this is uh, this is U.S. oil, which is a reflection of uh which is a, the um, WTI, or West Texas Intermediate. And, and we see a low all the way down here, right around the, just below the 44 level, which is extremely low. And we see this huge move to the downside. This is a daily chart uh, before um, a slight pop to the upside. So has oil bottomed? Uh, you know, not quite sure. Uh, I'm looking for a bottom early this year uh, and a, perhaps a, a rise from there, but uh, for now, uh, very difficult to say. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on real quick. Before we get started, just a quick uh, risk disclaimer, risk warning. Financial trading carries a high level of risk uh, to your capital with the possibility of losing more than your initial investment and may not be suitable for all investors. Ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek investment advice if necessary. Okay, let's move on. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, who I am or what I do, this is me. Uh, I am, again, the Chief Technical Strategist at City Index Group, which means I basically trade on a daily basis. I analyze the markets on a daily basis, and I educate much like what I'm doing uh, currently. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, who I am, I've been on FX Street for uh, many, many years. So, uh, you know, this is basically me. Okay, so enough about me. Let's move forward. Okay, so uh, let's talk first about... Uh, you know, the basics of, of how I uh, approach the markets on a daily basis. Now, in terms of fundamental analysis, I do keep, a, you know, I do keep a, abreast of the, uh, of the fundamentals of any market that I'm trading, uh, you know, certainly the, uh, the currencies, but also the equities markets and the commodities markets as well. Now, in terms of fundamental analysis, let's just quickly go through this. There are different analytical factors for each market or instrument traded. So, uh, you know, if you, have, uh, if you have an individual stock, if you have an index, if you have, a, a, you know, a currency pair or a commodity, all of the fundamentals are going to be different for each of those different markets. Now, fundamental analysis is good for choosing markets to trade and for 
longer term directional bias. For example, on the euro dollar, we can see that, uh, you know, it's very definitely a bearish trend. And this is driven by the fundamentals, uh, including uh, what happened uh, a couple weeks ago with the uh, QE announcement or the quantitative easing announcement uh, from the ECB. So that that is fundamental analysis in play. It's giving you uh, some direction. It's giving you a potential trend and a longer term directional bias. Now, what, what fundamental analysis is not good at is determining trade entries, exits, and risk management. I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Now, uh, what you need to do when you analyze any market fundamentally is you need to process a lot of information from multiple sources in order to paint a full fundamental picture. And I do that to some extent. Uh, but at the same time, you know, as most of you may know, I am primarily a technical trader. Uh, so what do we look at when we're uh, analyzing uh, the fundamentals, especially in the currency markets? We're looking at global macro factors. We're looking at interest rates, inflation, central bank act, monetary policy, global risk sentiment. And okay? we're looking at all of that. Uh, now, uh, it's a lot of information to process and to use in your trading. So that, that's why when I look at fundam the fundamentals, I'm looking basically for a longer term directional bias to help with my technicals. Now, that being said, I trade all different types of markets, okay? I'm not just a, a currency trader. I, I trade the commodities, I trade indices as well, and I also trade individual shares or stocks. Now, uh, when you look at the fundamentals for all those markets, although there is some linkage uh, within, uh, you know, among those markets, uh, it's basically completely different. So if you're analyzing uh, an individual stock, and you're an analyzing the euro dollar, it's going to be completely different in terms of the fundamentals. Okay. However, technical analysis, which is my specialty, you're looking at the same essential analytical, analytical factors for each market or instrument traded. So, you know, uh, regardless of the fundamentals, when you look at a chart, it's a chart. Okay. Same basic um, components of the chart, including the trend, support and resistance, chart patterns, you know, a couple of indicators here and there, uh, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I look at, okay? So uh, what is technical analysis good for? It's good for determining trends, key price levels, and potential price turning points, uh, trade entries, exits, and risk management, which I'm going to talk about today. And uh, what it's not good at is determining the reasons for any given price move, okay? nor for the longer-term directional bias. So when you look at the charts, okay, you're looking at potential – uh, entries, exits, and risk management. But what you don't have is you don't have the reasons. But then again, do you really need the reasons? When you're trading on a day-to-day -day basis, do you really need the reasons for a specific move happening in hindsight? I would say not. Okay, I'm going to be using uh, the technicals, the charts, the price action as triggers for getting into trades, getting out of trades, and for setting my... Okay, so uh, with technical analysis, there's a, a need to process only information from charts and chart tools. And there are so many, I mean, for those of you who've been trading for a while, there are hundreds of available tools and new ones come out every day um, and uh, that can be used in, in, you know, in technical analysis. But really what I always say is you, you find a handful of basic tools and strategies that have proven to you their usefulness and effectiveness over time. Okay? And only those should be used. And for those of you who've heard me speak before, you know uh, essentially the components that I use, and I'll show them to you today. Okay, so uh, just a word about trading the news. Uh, many individual traders try to do it, okay? And some people make a living off of it, uh, but very few, uh, at least the ones I've seen, have actually succeeded over the long run. Now, why is this? Well, what it requires is steel nerves, high risk tolerance, and a fast trigger finger, okay? It also requires consistently correct interpretation of news. Now, you may think it's as simple as a news event comes out or something happens with uh, a central bank or what have you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, then you can, uh, you can make a correct inter interpretation and you get the direction correct. As we all know, it's not always that simple, okay? So uh, you may have um, some view on the news, some news that came out, and uh, the currency pair could go in a completely different direction. So that's why, you know, I tend to say, uh, you know, stay away from trading the news. Now, uh, getting the news before anyone else also helps, but this is almost impossible for individual traders. So, you know, for individual stocks, oftentimes uh, people uh, will get news before others. 
But for the macro markets, like the uh, the currencies, the indices, et cetera, it's very difficult to get news before, uh, you know, at least before the uh, the institutional traders, et cetera. Okay, but even with all these, it's very difficult to beat the speed of uh, institutional algorithmic traders. Uh, and even if you had the necessary speed, the market may move against you inexplicably or saw motion as it often, often does. Okay, so it's better to avoid trading right around scheduled news and instead use the tools that you have at your fingertips, which I'm going to talk about today. Um, or you could trade or fade the momentum of the market after the news has been thoroughly digested, which is what I often do. I'm not going to be sitting there waiting for scheduled news to come out with my finger on the uh, trigger on, on the on the mouse button. OK, I'm not going to be doing that. But after the news has been digested, uh, then at that point, I'm going to be looking back towards the technicals to uh, uh, to dictate a potential um, trade for me. OK, now this principle of news trading. Uh, which I'm basically saying, uh, you know, try to avoid trading the news. It applies only to scheduled news. Of course, um, uh, you know, unforeseen news like that uh, Swiss franc move cannot be controlled. Of course, I mean, no one, no one can see that coming, or you know, very, very few people could see that coming, and uh, to react to that is is impossible. So, uh, you know, I'm only scheduled news. Um, okay, so uh, in terms of, uh, you know, some people may ask me, uh, what what happened uh, for the, uh, you know, did you have a, a position on in the Euro Swiss? Uh, you know, as most of you may know, I am a, um, I am primarily a, uh, a trend trader. So, of course, with the, uh, you know, with the floor on the Euro Swiss there, uh, you know, what happened was there was, a, there was a very tight range, uh, as you could, you know, all imagine. Let me go back to that. Uh, let me go back to that chart real quick. Um, there was a very tight range, okay, before that. So I'm not trading that range, okay? But some people got caught in that, uh, which is unfortunate. But, uh, you know, I wasn't actually uh, in any position because uh, there was no trend, and I'm looking for a trend, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Okay, so right now, uh, let's talk about uh, very quickly. I know many of you have seen this before. My basic market principle that has not changed over many years is TPB, trend pullback breakout. So I look to I trend, I look for a pullback in the market, and then I look for a breakout. So first and foremost, I'm looking for a trend, and as strong a trend as I could find. So I'm looking for this trend. If there's a trend, this could be an uptrend or a downtrend, doesn't matter. Okay, especially with the currencies, it doesn't matter. So uh, we have an uptrend here. Uh, I'm looking for the trend. Number two, I'm looking for a pullback within the trend, and then I'm looking for a breakout in the direction of the trend to trigger my, my trade. Once I have that breakout, I, I have my stop loss where the, the uh, market is telling me I'm wrong, and then I can choose my uh, profit target, et cetera. Okay? So uh, this is the basic approach that I take uh, in pretty much all of my trading. So if you take a look at the euro dollar, the pound dollar, the um, even the dollar yen, uh, not recently, but uh, even the dollar yen, uh, the Aussie dollar, you know, amazing um, examples of this in play. The, you know, you're looking for the trend, you're looking for the pullback, and then you're looking for the breakout. In the in terms of the euro dollar, pound dollar, and Aussie dollar, uh, those were all uh, downtrends, or they still are all downtrends. Uh, although we see we see a pop in the um, uh, in the pound dollar uh, today, but uh, you know, what we're looking for is going with the trend. Now, in terms of the uh, dollar yen, we've had an uptrend for a long time. Right now, it's in a consolidation. I'm looking for a potential uh, break to the upside, and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, this is the basic approach that I take, okay? So this principle works on any time frame and in any market. I know a lot of you may be short-term traders, but, uh, you know, there are intraday trends. There are weekly trends. There are, uh, you know, trends that go on for years. There are trends that go on for months, as we've seen in the uh, currency pairs. So, uh, you know, whatever time frame you're trading uh, and whatever market you're trading, you can always find a trend. And the thing is that I'm, you know, a lot of people may say, oh, the, you know, uh, markets don't trend all the time and for the vast majority of the time they're ranging. Well, I would beg to, beg to differ on that because uh, what I'm looking for or what I'm looking at at an, on a daily basis is, uh, you know, a bunch of currency pairs. I'm looking at a bunch of commodities. I'm looking at a bunch of individual stocks as well as uh, indices. And uh, you're bound to find a trend there somewhere, okay? And in terms of the currencies alone, 
uh, we've seen recently and for the past many months and, and even years, we've seen trending activity. So currency pairs tend to trend a lot and need to find a lot of opportunities, okay? Okay, so um, uh, instead of chasing runaway markets, you know, what we want to do is we want to wait for the pullback, okay? There are many runaway markets. You saw, uh, you saw the runway, the market, um, for example, on the Aussie dollar. Let's take a look at that. Okay, the Aussie dollar, uh, when the, um, well, that was a big move to the downside. I mean, it was a considerable move to the downside when the uh, Reserve Bank, the RBA, Reserve Bank of uh, Australia, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they uh, reduced the, uh, the interest, they cut the interest rates. And then we saw a big move to the downside. Are you going to, uh, are you going to uh, trade or uh, trade that, try to chase that runaway market? You know, I would say no. I mean, that, that was, um, that was a, a that was based upon the news. So what I'm going to be looking at is we see a very strong downtrend here. I'm looking for pullbacks within that uh, downtrend, pullbacks to the upside in this case. And then I'm looking for a breakdown uh, to go towards uh, further lows and to further continue this very strong downtrend uh, in Aussie dollar. Okay. So this is basically uh, the type of thing I'm looking for, you know, look, looking for a trend, looking for a pullback, looking for a breakout. And then if you talk about entries and exits, uh, you know, very simple, okay? The breakout, and this is not the only type of breakout I play, but uh, this is one type of breakout where you see a breakout, okay? Uh, a breakout, let's say, of this uh, counter trend uh, resistance line, a breakout above there, that could be possibly a, um, you know, a trigger to go long, okay? So that is your entry, and then your uh, your exit to the downside would be, the, uh, would be a, below the low of the pullback, okay? then your uh, your profit target could be uh, based upon a number of things, uh, including a, a resistance level to the upside, could be based upon, uh, you know, uh, a risk-reward ratio or what have you, okay? So there are many different ways to get out of trades. I don't have time to go over all of that, but, um, you know, this is basically what I'm looking at. Okay, so, uh, you know, for those of you who uh, haven't heard me say this before, you know, that was my major approach to the market, the TPB trend pullback breakout. Now, this is, uh, you know, my primary trade entry and exit principles. There's one way to enter a trade, the right direction of the best possible price. This goes back to TPB, trend pullback breakout, which is I'm looking for the trend. I'm looking for a pullback. The trend is the right direction. The pullback is the best possible price, okay? And then a breakout is showing me that that, tr that pullback is perhaps ending and going back in the direction of the trend. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now, uh, two ways to exit a trade <clears throat> is at a loss, where the market's telling you you're wrong, or at a profit, which is preferably at a multiple of your defined risk. This goes back to the reward to risk ratio, and you want as good a reward to risk ratio for your strategy as you could possibly have. Why is that? Because uh, you wanna have uh, a strategy that works and that's consistently profitable over time. Therefore, for uh, profits that are preferably at a multiple of your defined risk. Now, a multiple could be one to one. Okay, if that's the, your, if uh, if you have a very high win ratio, okay, then one to one is perfectly fine in terms of reward to risk. Um, two to one, if you have a less uh, a successful strategy, you know, two to one or one and a half to one could work even better. If you have a long term trend following strategy, it could be even higher than that, three to one, four to one in terms of. Uh, reward to risk ratio, okay? Because you're going to be taking small losses, and then uh, when you do hit a trend that works, then you're going to be hitting big profits that will, uh, you know, overshadow your, your losses, okay? So these are my trade entry and exit principles. Uh, two ways to exit a trade, at a loss where the market tells you you're wrong, and just to go back, you know, basically, if we take a look here, if we get into the trade long here, for example, this is just an example, we get into a trade long here, uh, where is our where is our uh, stop loss? It's right under the low of the pullback because if it comes back to you out there, that's the market telling you you're, that you're wrong. Okay, and at that point, you should get out of the trade. Um, okay. All right. So uh, okay. So now uh, confluence very quickly. Uh, I talk about this all the time just because it's very very important uh, in my trading. Uh, what is confluence? Uh, it's agreement or confirmation among many different things. Usually, it's among the tools that I trade. So, for example, I'm going to be using a Fibonacci level. I'm going to be using a support resistance level. Uh, I'm going to be using a moving average. I'm going to be using, uh, you know, a trend line. 
uh, or an indicator or what have you. Uh, you put all that together, and the more that those tools agree with each other, and this also includes the different timeframes, the more that these uh, different tools agree with each other, the, the higher probability the trade it tends to be, okay? So, uh, for example, uh, in terms of timeframes, let's say I have three different timeframes. I, uh, I got a daily chart. I got an hourly chart. I got a five-minute chart, okay? If all of those charts are showing me, are saying for me to, that, that this is bullish, okay, then and they all agree with each other. That's a confluence of time frames. And in those cases, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to look to go long because these three different time frames, the short term, the, the uh, medium term, and the long term are all agreeing with each other and saying to go long. In that case, I'm, you know, a good bet would be to go long. And uh, also with, uh, let's say, a Fibonacci level. Okay, it, it combines with a uh, uh, with a uh, key support level. We see this all the time on all the charts. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, you know, we see a Fibonacci level combined with a uh, with a support or resistance level combined with a uh, moving average. Okay, and uh, we see they they agree with each other, and uh, there's a bounce at that level. Now, for me, that's a high probability trade. Let's say there's also a a hammer candle or a, a, a shooting star candle at the same place. That for me is a higher probability trade. Okay, so where possible, we look for areas where more than one factor provide rationale for a trade entry or exit. The more rationale there is for the higher probability that trade will tend to be. Okay, so confluence should influence your decision on whether to make a trade or not, the direction of the trade, the timing of the trade, and the price entry and exit of the trade. Okay. Uh, so I have many different confluence factors. Number one, is there a trend? Okay, if so, which direction? Number two, what is the speed or volatility of this trend? Number three, do multiple time frames confirm this trend? Number four, is the trend pulling back or in correction or consolidation? And number five, where are the major and minor support resistance levels? Okay, there's a difference between major and minor. The major is generally on the longer term charts, the minor are on the very short term charts. Uh, number six, where are the major moving averages? Okay, usually I'm going to be using a 200, uh, a 200 period, a 100 period, and a 50 period. Sometimes in a strong trend, I'll use a 20 period. Okay, so uh, I'm using all of these moving averages to denote trend and uh, to de denote uh, where the longer term um, trend is, where the short term trend is. Uh, number seven, are there any key chart patterns showing? Okay, so if there's a triangle pattern or a um, or a pennant pattern or what have you. If they're right around a support or resistance level, even stronger is that break. Uh, number eight, are there any key candlestick patterns showing? Like I just mentioned, the hammer candle or the um, or the uh, uh, the shooting star candle or the doji or what have you, okay? So I'm looking for those as well. Are there other useful indicators supporting this trade, okay? So, you know, it may look like a lot that, uh, that I'm looking at here in terms of confluence, but these are the questions that I ask myself. And, you know, I've been doing this for many, 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 many years. And the thing is that uh, this has become second nature. So I'm, you know, I'm outlining these to you now, but it's not like I'm asking myself, uh, is there a trend? What, what, you know, what's the direction? What's the speed? Uh, do multiple times. I'm not actually, you know, uh, uh, saying this to myself, talking to myself and asking these questions, but this has become ingrained in the way I trade for so long that, uh, you know, this is, you know, all these questions are answered. Whenever I take a trade, all of these questions are answered, okay? So um, once you ingrain these questions within you, you'll have a much better time finding higher probability trades. Okay, uh, trade entry techniques, okay? What we usually, what I usually do is I add a breakout criterion, okay? So I'm looking for entries with a breakout, okay? So just as, as I mentioned with the TPB, trend pullback breakout, I'm looking for the trend, then a pullback, but where's my actual entry? It's on a breakout. Why? Because that is a clear cut, um, you know, a, a clear cut trigger level for me to get into a, a, a trade, okay? Whether it's to the upside or the downside. Okay, when an uh, opportunity occurs according to my strategy, okay, I see the trend, I see the pullback, okay, I'm only gonna get in on the breakout because that's my trigger. And this helps build a stronger case for a trade. Uh, we, uh, you know, oftentimes I'll look for a breakout above or below the last bar. It's going to be above the last bar if it's going long. It's going to be below the last bar if it's going short. Okay, and this helps to filter out trades without momentum. I say helps to filter out because, of course, you're not going to filter out all of the uh, fake, 
uh, breakouts, the false breakouts or the uh, the false trades, et cetera, okay? It, this helps to filter out trades that don't have short-term momentum, okay? So let's say I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking at a long-term trend, like I'm looking at on the euro dollar. Now, um, uh, let's say that uh, price is just moving up and down, up and down, there's no real breakout. Uh, at that point, I'm not going to be uh, looking for a trade until there is a break of that breakout that's showing me the short-term momentum with the longer-term trend and the medium-term trend, and therefore, that seems to be a higher probability trade for me. If the breakout occurs, short-term momentum is more likely to be in the direction of, than if no breakout occurs. Um, yeah, and so that's a trade entry technique. Trade exit techniques. Okay, uh, what I do, uh, as I mentioned on the TPB or trend pullback breakout, I'm looking to... Uh, Rest assured, I'm going to show you the charts in a second. Um, for the trade exit techniques, I place the initial stop loss above or below the most recent significant resistance or support level. Okay, why is that? Again, that is the market telling you that you are wrong, that your trade is wrong, and therefore you should probably get out of that trade. If you don't get out of the trade, it could very well turn into something that uh, becomes very, very painful. And then uh, it gets harder and harder to get out of the trade. Therefore, it's better to let the market tell you right away that you're wrong, then wait for, uh, you know, wait till uh, you're uh, way way out of the money and you're, way, uh, you're losing a lot of money. At that point, it's gonna be much more painful. You can also place initial stop loss according to uh, ATR, average true range, uh, which I sometimes do. And you look at the, uh, the most recent range and then you look for, uh, you know, areas where you could uh, place your stop loss. I sometimes do that. You could place your stop loss according to an indicator, like a moving average or parabolic SAR. Okay, that's not the best method, but uh, you know it's a method. Uh, what I often do is I trail my stops manually. Okay, once initial profit is achieved. So uh, once we see uh, that there is profit in in a certain trade, I will often move my stop loss first to break even, and then uh, from there I'll uh, I'll keep uh, trailing it manually. Okay, uh, and I place multiple fractional trades according uh, using different profit exit levels. I combine trailing stops with multiple exit levels, and the key to all this is to limit losses in losing trades and lock in profits during the course of winning trades. Okay, let's go to the charts. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, what we're looking at here. Now, uh, if you take a look at uh, the, uh, I wrote uh, I wrote some predictions on uh, our City Index website um, in December of uh, you know near Christmas for the, the day before Christmas I wrote a, uh, a prediction uh, market predictions for uh, in you know in terms of technical analysis for different indices currencies and commodities it's still on our website if you want to take a look um, and I gave uh, several predictions of where I thought price would be in the beginning or you know towards the early part of 2015. For the most part, a lot of it has come true, um, or most of it has. Um, now, I guess you, you don't really want to take a look at the indices because this is mostly about currencies. But in terms of the, uh, you know, the pound dollar and the euro dollar, which I uh, looked at as well as gold uh, and also crude oil. Okay, I looked at all of these, and uh, in terms of my targets, um, they were all hit and then some by a lot. Okay, so. You know what I got right was the direction. What I uh, you know, what I also got right were the targets. Right was that uh, price moved much faster than I had anticipated. So uh, if we take a look at euro dollar, that is uh, basically what we're looking at. So you know if we take a look at um, what happened. Okay, so uh, this was in uh, this was in uh, right before Christmas of last year. Okay, price action was right around you know 122 or so. Uh, what I was looking for uh, to start the new year off was I was looking for the 12040 target and then 11875 target to the downside. Okay, I'm only looking short because I'm only looking at the um at the trend and also the fundamentals are telling me that uh you know the trend is still to the downside and uh we have this very strong trend. So so now what happens during that time? Uh, right away, the first of uh the first of the year the first trading day of the year, we gapped down below my first target, 120.40. So that was hit right away. Right after that, okay, the, the second trading day, um, second or third trading day, we see uh, we see price action hit 118.75. Okay, so then it broke down below 118.75. And if you're if you're wondering where I get these uh, weird numbers, it's all the way from past price action because we're we're at very long term lows. Uh, I think right now we hit a long term. 
11 year low on the uh, euro dollar, which was down here at the 111 level. Okay, so uh, we're at very long term lows. But, uh, you know, in terms of uh, where I got these uh, support uh, levels, I'm looking back in time, you know. Uh, I'm looking back in time to where there were uh, significant pivots in price. And because, uh, you know, markets have a, a memory, okay, that's what we're looking at in terms of the uh, support and resistance levels. So 118.75, that was hit, okay. And then price action broke below there, okay. Uh, and then it came back up. And then it used 118.75 again as resistance, and then it dropped to the downside. My next target after 118.75 was 116.40. Okay, so it broke down. It hit 116.40, broke down below there, uh, came back up. You know, uh, resistance again 116.40. Okay, my next target to the downside 114. It hits 114 and blows way past that. And then the next target to the downside was 111. It, it hit that on the dot. And then move uh, back to the upside. Now, uh, the current uh, the current uh, pop uh, for me was uh, unforeseen. I was looking at 114 as key resistance and a possible continuation of the down move, uh, possibly. Uh, possibly, yeah. I see some questions there. I'm sorry, I can't really get to them right now. Uh, I have a uh, some limited time here, but I'll try to get to uh, as many as I can uh, a little bit later. Now, if we take a look here, uh, we see that, uh, uh, okay, so it hit my target 111, uh, and then it pops to the upside. I'm, I'm looking for, this is the pullback I'm looking for, and then I'm looking for another breakdown to the downside, uh, and then a breakdown to the downside, looking once again towards the 111 level, and then a breakdown below there, I'm looking towards 108. Okay, and uh, where I'm looking at, at uh, Euro dollar on a longer term basis, I'm looking for uh, possibly towards parity, okay? So right now, euro dollar is looking very bearish. And uh, yeah, we're going to find uh, pullbacks. We always do. But um, in terms of the trend, I, you know, I think it's going to continue to the downside. There's still tremendous bearish pressure on euro dollar and uh, looking for further downside on, uh, on this trend, okay? And this trend, of course, has been in place ever since uh, the 140 level right back here in May. So uh, very nice uh, downtrend here, and then it steepen it, it gets uh, steeper uh, in in mid December. Okay, mid December of last year it gets steeper, and then as we can see, the rest is history. So looking again towards 111, and then towards the 108 level as the next major targets to the downside. Let's take a look at um, pound dollar. Okay, wait, let me just take a look first. Uh, if you take a look here. I'm going to show you an example of the confluence, and I show this all the time um, if you're sick of hearing it, but uh, let's take a look here real quick. Uh, right here, if we take a look here, okay, so this move down here, it hits a low at 135, and I show this all the time because it's such a beautiful example. Uh, it, it hits uh, 135, and it pops back to the upside here, okay? It pops back to the upside uh, to 137, 137 being strong support and resistance, Okay, from all the way back here, a strong support and resistance. It hits 137. That's also where the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement is right here. It's also where the 200-day moving average was. Okay, and we also see on the stochastics a, a cross down below over bought. Okay, so that's another indicator. So you have five different indicators here showing you that uh, perhaps this is uh, there's very strong resistance here. And uh, perhaps we're moving to the downside. Okay, so at that point, uh, you know, it could be a very good trigger to get into a trade. We had very strong resistance. Now, to a trade, uh, just because the confluence is there doesn't mean I'm going to get into a trade. What I could often do, or what I think I did back then, was this. Okay, so I just drew a counter trend, uh, a counter trend line within, uh, you know, within this down move. I see str very strong resistance here, just because it hits that resistance. You know, how do I know it's not going to keep going further up? I don't know, okay? So I wait for it come, to come down, and then I wait for it to break below this uh, resistance level, and then I'm uh, possibly going to go short. And then when I go short, you know, if it breaks back above that 137 level, then uh, then I'm out and I'm wrong, okay? The market's telling me I'm wrong. So it's it, it can be as simple as that, especially on good charts like Euro dollar. We see, we see lots of examples here of, uh, you know, chart patterns, pullbacks within trends, where you could have played the move. So, for example, down here as well, okay, 
you know, each of these moves, like uh, what I just mentioned, we see a breakdown below 118.75 support. We see a pullback to the upside. And then uh, if you take a look on the shorter term, this is a little bit hard to see it on a daily chart, but if you take a look at a shorter term chart, you could see then that there was a subsequent break to the downside, okay, and a perfect opportunity to go short, okay? Same thing here, okay? Perfect opportunity after the pullback, perfect opportunity to go short. You'll see it better on the uh, shorter term charts, okay? Right now, there's no opportunity to go short yet on uh, dollar, but once if it does uh, move back to the downside, uh, potentially to continue this downtrend, then I'm looking to go short. Um, okay, here, uh, what we see on pound dollar, same type of thing. Okay, so uh, long-term downtrend here, uh, not really long-term, but it goes back to uh, July of, of last year. Okay, all the way up here near the 172 area or so, um, we see a very nice uh, downtrend here. Okay, so uh, pullbacks, and then breakdowns, pullbacks, breakdowns. Right now we are in a consolidation and a pullback, a very strong pullback. Uh, you know, not not that strong, but we've got a pullback nonetheless. Now, uh, what was I looking for? If you take a look at um, at here again, uh, you know, I was looking for something uh, a little bit um, later, okay, to happen. But what happened was uh, I was looking for. Um, Significant bearish bias going to the new year. Uh, pound dollar consumed be poised to break down below December's one year low. Uh, I'm looking uh, for support target 54 and 150, and then potentially towards the 150 psychological level. Okay, this was written back in on Christmas Eve. And what happened was, uh, you know, this is where it was when I wrote it. And then, of course, we got that big beginning of the year move to the downside. It hit 154 right away on the first day of the year. Uh, first trading day of the year, and then uh, it hit, and then subsequently it hit my 152.50 uh, target right away, and it even went further down, uh, but it did not hit my 150 level until much later. Okay, so 150, and then from here, what I'm looking for after this uh, rebound plays itself out, I'm looking for downside towards 148, strong support level to the downside. Okay, so a breakdown below 150 again, looking towards 148 uh, to continue the trend. Let's look at dollar yen. Uh, dollar yen, uh, what we're in is right now is a very big consolidation. Okay, for a while we saw lots of action. If you uh, if you heard me speak um, back in uh, back in July and uh, before July, okay? uh, before July, you know, if you heard me speak, uh, you would hear me say, "There's nothing going on in dollar yen. I'm staying away." Okay. And I said that many, many times throughout the course of this uh, uh, this uh, little uh, you know trading range. This was a consolidation, okay. So nothing was happening there until that breakout of this uh, of this consolidation occurred right around in uh, right around in uh, you know late July, okay. So we had that breakout. It, well, it didn't really start out as much, okay. But then we started to see a climb, okay. So once we started to see a climb, once we were in an uptrend. I was looking for progressively higher, uh, you know, progressively higher targets. So we were looking for further targets up uh, higher and higher, you know. Uh, so it was at, uh, I forget here, 108 uh, was the first one, and then uh, 110, and then 114.50, and then uh, 118, and then 120 and 122. 122 hit, okay? 122 was not hit. It just came short of hitting my 122 target before pulling back to the downside, and then consolidating in what we see now as a big triangle pattern consolidation. So uh, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for more um, dollar strengthening. I'm looking for a further move to the upside uh, on dollar yen. And a breakout above here would uh, trigger, you know, something for me. Okay, so a breakout above uh, this line would trigger something. I'm looking for 122 or 120 and 122 once again. Okay, so right now, though, we are in a big consolidation. Now, Aussie dollar is another story altogether. Look at this chart, amazing chart. So if we take a look at Aussie dollar, we see that uh, we have a strong downtrend here, okay? A very strong downtrend ever since this breakdown below this consolidation, this trading range, okay? So that occurred in uh, early September of last year. We saw a breakdown, okay? That in itself was a good trigger. That breakdown uh, followed through, though. It followed through, went to the downside, successfully lower, uh, okay, 86, and then there was some consolidation, and then it dropped further below 86, 
uh, looking towards 83. Uh, it hit 83, looking towards 81. Okay, and then it pops back up towards 83, and then pops below 81 once again, looking towards 77. If you take a look at any of my analysis on uh, the City Index website, uh, you'll see that I was looking for below 81. I was looking for 77. Okay. Now, what could happen here? You know, that, that uh, what happened on with the RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, uh, just a, a, a few days ago, uh, that was the, um, the catalyst that made, made it hit my, my target at 77. Okay, 77 is a, is a prior support level. That, that's why I chose it. Um, okay, so uh, what, I'm, what am I looking for? Well, you know, right now, we're, yeah, I guess uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, this is looking for further downside. Okay, so what we're looking for here is towards the 75 level and then ultimately towards the 73 level potentially, okay? It's pretty low. It's, it's a big extreme. Um, I forget how long this low was, but, uh, you know, basically we're looking towards uh, the 75 level. I believe uh, that's also where the Reserve Bank of Australia's uh, target uh, you know, could be. So uh, we're looking towards the 75 on uh, Aussie dollar and, uh, you know, further down uh, potentially towards 73. But right now, very strong downtrend. Uh, and again, we had a pop to the upside. Uh, it's a uh, it's a pullback looking for further downside on Aussie dollar. OK, um, let's take a look briefly at gold before I get to some others. Uh, gold, uh, you know, OK, so what I was looking for here. Uh, we had a we had a very low bottom here. Okay, this is of course after a, a very uh, a very long uh, downtrend that started back in 2012 from that high near 1800. Okay, so we saw that uh, downtrend and then a lot of consolidation. Uh, I was looking for a rebound. So if you take a look uh, when I uh, when I was talking about this uh, on this analysis. Um, uh, I said, while a lower downside target resides around the 1100 level, 2015 should see at least another attempt at a recovery from the current long-term depth, depths. In this event, the key upside resistance targets to watch for include 1325 and then 1425. So what happened? Okay, so um, I was looking for further upside, and this was around when price was around here on gold. Okay, so uh, I was looking for further upside, and what happened uh, was we saw from the beginning of the year, of this year, we saw a move to the upside and a breakout above this uh, triangle pattern, okay? This rough, large triangle pattern. So it breaks out to the upside, okay? 1265 first. Next was 1325. It, of course, it hit a high right around, uh, you know, right around the 1307 area or so, 1307, before pulling back to the downside. My target continues to be 1325 to the upside, Um after this pullback, but uh, you know there has been a, a rebound and recovery. Uh, it's pulled back from there, but I'm looking for a further rebound and recovery from these, uh, you know, rather low lows here, right around uh, the 11:30 area or so. Let's take a look at a couple other things. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I was talking about the UK 100, which is the uh, uh, FTSE. It reflects the FTSE. 100, uh, that's the UK stock in index. Uh, you know, what I was looking for was further upside towards 68, uh, 68.75 or 6,900 resistance, and we're close to getting there, uh, looking for further upside on that. S&P 500, what's going to happen? I am looking for a correction. I'm looking for a pullback. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got strong resistance at the all-time highs at 20.90. It may, it may, in fact, get near there. But, um, you know, in terms of a correction or a pullback, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I am looking for that, uh, you know, sometime uh, during the early part of this year. Uh, and then finally, uh, well, I mean, if you take a look at the, uh, the Germany 30, or the, this is the uh, German DAX chart. Okay, just as a side note, the German DAX chart has been uh, phenomenal in terms of its uh, uptrend. So uh, we take a look at this uh, move to the upside. It's just been uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and this has in part to do uh, ECB announcement, but if you take a look at this, uh, you know, very, uh, if you haven't traded the German DAX before, it's very, uh, it's very wild to say the least, but uh, it moves a lot. And, um, you know, it's very good to trade oftentimes when you, when you find good opportunities. And then oil, uh, lastly, you know, uh, it bottomed out uh, for the time being uh, right, uh, around, right below 44, around 4360. This is the US oil, the WTI, uh, you know, West Texas Intermediate, 
Uh, it's not Brent, but uh, we're seeing a similar picture on Brent. Um, so what we're looking at here, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking for uh, a potential bottoming out. I have resistance here at 55, okay? Resistance at 55, uh, it was not hit uh, last couple days yet um, in terms of the rebound, but, uh, you know, that's my resistance level now. In terms of downside, okay, if, if this continues, if the, you know, right now the U.S. is uh, starting to pull back on its, uh, on its uh, exploration and new projects, but... You know, in terms of the Middle East, uh, the production has not really um, uh, slowed down. So if we continue to see that, we could see lower pr uh, oil prices. And uh, I've got, I mean, just to be a little bit scary about this, I've got uh, a strong support right around the 35 level to the downside. So if there's a breakdown below this last low, uh, then possibly uh, we could see as low as that. But, uh, you know, basically what I'm looking for and what I'm hoping for is a bottoming out and a further move uh, back up towards the upside above uh, the 55 level. OK. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I, I know I didn't have time to get to any questions. I have 45 minutes with uh, with uh, FX Street. Um, if you have any questions that I didn't answer and I'm sorry I didn't answer any. But uh, you can always email me at james.chen at cityindex.com. Again, james.chen at cityindex.com. And I would like to thank all of you for your time today and see you ne uh, next time on the next web webinar with uh, FX Street. Thank you very much.